Hello YouTube! Uh, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. Uh, today on our LS Tech Tips, uh, we're going to go over your steam lines. Uh, why you need them, where to run them, and uh, you know what I think is, is the best thing to do with them. I want to start this video by letting you know exactly why it is you have uh, steam ports or steam lines on an LS engine. Um, on the old school small block Chevys or uh, you know the Gen 1s, uh, the Gen 2 which was you know the actually the second itineration of the LT1 but because um, we've got the you know the new Gen 5 LT1s now but anyway on those engines the highest point in the cooling system uh, was your your uh, thermostat housing. <laughs> Sorry guys been a long day. Um, anyway so you know the coolant actually came in and it pushed all the air to the top. The air got pushed out. It, there, there wasn't that big of a deal with, uh, with uh, air pockets on the Gen 1 and, and Gen 2 Chevy engines. That's, that's the bottom line. Uh, the problem with the LS engine is when they designed it, uh, as you all know, they put the thermostat housing way down here at the bottom. Uh, the coolant circulates up through the the uh, thermostat housing now and because of that there's nowhere for trapped air to go okay that's where the steam ports come in the, the little steam lines so the whole purpose of these steam lines is to get trapped air out of the system that's why when you're doing a coolant flush and fill or, or just a coolant fill if you're putting it in for the first time you know, you don't fill up the radiator first like you do with a traditional small block Chevy. That's not going to do you any good because what's going to happen, you're going to fill up the radiator, the radiator is going to fill up, the water is going to get up to the thermostat housing, which is, you know, now closer to the bottom of the engine and it's going to stop. It's never going to go in the engine. So what you do when you're, you're filling the LS engine is you unhook that, that uh, steam line which acts kind of like a bleeder, you know, for any air that gets trapped in there. And you unhook the top radiator hose and you fill the engine first through the top radiator hose until a little bit of coolant starts coming out of, you know, your steam line. Um, that, you know, that's supposed to bleed most of the air out of the system. Again, uh, it doesn't, you know, you could still have some air trapped in there. So the steam line is still there so that as, you know, you go through a couple heat cycles, and the air kind of gets pushed up to the top of the engine. It comes out that steam port, works its way to the radiator. I keep calling it a steam port, I mean steam line. Uh, it works its way out of that steam line into the radiator and you know, it's then the air is just in the radiator there and it kind of gets burped out into your uh, recirculation tank or overflow, whatever you want to call it. That steam line manifold. Uh, that goes across the engine. There's there's four points to it in the earlier LS engines, like the LS ones. Uh, I think the LS sixes. You know, you had you had two ports in the back and two ports in the front. Well, in the later model engines, you no longer have the two ports in the back. You've just got the two ports in the front. Now, there's a lot of debate over why they did it. Uh, I'm not an you know uh, I'm not a GM engineer. I don't know why they did it. But I have my theory, and my theory is the same as pretty much everybody else's. Because the purpose of the steam line was to be the highest point in the engine, in most applications, the engine is not sitting level in the vehicle. It's actually tilted slightly back. So there was really no need to have those ports in the back because they, they were never going to bleed any air because the highest point in the engine was the top front of the engine. So that's my theory. Uh, I believe that's why GM just went to, you know, the the two port setup at the front of the engine because, you know, you weren't going to bleed any air out of the back anyway. Now that you know why they're there and you know in fact why you need them and that yes you definitely do need them, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and go over a factory setup. I've got several vehicles in the driveway out here. So I'm going to show you the way the factory sets it up, and then I'm going to show you the way you can set it up in your swap. Now there's multiple ways of doing it. Um, I'm not here to tell you which one's wrong, which one's right. That's up to you. Uh, but 
you know, all four of these ways I'm going to show you, uh, they'll all work perfectly fine. It's, it's really just about how you want it to look when you're done and how much stuff you want in your way. Let's go out here and have a look. The first thing I want to show you is the factory position. Now you can see the, the lines coming out right there. And it comes around. And I don't know if you can see right there where I'm pointing at. Um, that's where it ties into the radiator. Now there's nothing wrong with this. This is the way the factory did it. Um, you know, that's great. But when we're, when we're doing an LS swap, um, you know, a lot of the time what you're trying to do is, is kind of neaten things up, make things look a little neater. So now that we've looked at the stock mounting position of the steam lines, I want to look at aftermarket options, okay? Now I'm going to start with what I consider the most sloppy. And by the most sloppy, I, I just mean, you know, uh, the one that doesn't look as, as neat per se and then I'm gonna move down the list of options that I know of <clears throat> until we get to the the option that I use which I think is the neatest option okay and uh, ironically enough also the cheapest now option number one is of course if you have a radiator that you know that that has an outlet to accept the steam line you can always run the steam line over to your radiator all right, that's option one. Option two, if you're swapping into a vehicle that originally had a heater hose nipple right here, that's your option two. Uh, what a lot of people do, they'll take a piece of hose like this and they'll take a smaller piece of hose and then, you know, uh, put like a, a nipple inside there clamp it all together and they'll bring that line all the way over here with their heater hose and fork it off and and come over and tie in right here that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that it's going to function just the way it would have on the factory application i just don't like it because i don't like hose extra hoses running that are unnecessary i'm just going to call both of those option one because you're basically doing the same thing you're running a hose all the way over from your steam line all the way over to your radiator so we'll just call both of those option one this is this would is what i would consider option two um a little bit neater and i see this a lot you can buy an adapter on ebay that basically you just take your upper radiator hose you cut the upper radiator hose and this adapter uh, some people also use it for a temperature sending unit uh, to mount a temperature sending unit in there it's just it's got a, a big nipple on either end so you cut your upper radiator hose put this in between the two pieces and you got a clamp here clamp here and then you can run your hose to it now the cool thing about that is you can actually bring it all the way back and you can cut your hose all the way back here at the pump okay so you know you don't you don't have to have it out in the open where it's really showing the downside to this is number one you have to cut your upper your upper radiator hose uh, I'd rather just have a solid one piece radiator hose and number two you have to buy that adapter and you know usually even for a cheap one on on eBay you're looking at you know around ten fifteen dollars uh, not a lot of money by any stretch but you know still it's it's 10 or 15 dollars and i i mean i don't want to i don't want to talk bad about people who use this method because it again it's perfectly fine perfectly acceptable i just i just don't like it for the reasons i've outlined that brings us to option three which is the option i have used on this application can you see it not really and that's the point this is option three. I have actually drilled and tapped the top of the water pump and run a two or three inch piece of hose from the top of the water pump over to the steam line. In order to give you a, a closer look at option three, um, rather than take everything apart, 
I decided to just, I, I mean, I've, I've got several of these used water pumps laying around. So uh, I just decided to throw a, throw a used water pump, uh, pup, <laughs> used water pump up on the bench here to kind of show you guys how to do this. Now it's important to remember that as long as you tap an area on this water pump that is pulling the water out of the engine, you're golden. Okay. So there, there's just, there's many different places you can tap here. I like to use this flat surface here on the truck pumps. Now on the car pumps, you know, your, your upper hose neck actually comes out of this flat surface. So then you have a flat surface here. So on the truck pumps, I usually drill and tap this surface. On the car pumps, I drill and tap this surface because it's going to look just like this. There are some of the truck pumps that do not have a flat surface. This is not here. On those, it's okay to just drill and tap in here somewhere. Okay? Somewhere else, you can drill and tap. I've never done this myself, but it's perfectly fine. You could drill and tap down here. You could also drill and tap up here. I mean, anywhere, just let me, uh, let me show you this. This, this line here goes out. Okay. Of course your filler neck here goes out. So anywhere you tap from here all the way over to here is perfectly fine because it's going to feed into an area that leads to this water neck, which leads to the radiator. That brings me to method four. There is a company, Dirty Dingo, and you can also buy these just generic on U or YouTube. <laughs> You're watching YouTube on eBay that sells spacer adapters. And, and what they're there for is to allow you to use the car style pump with the truck style accessories or you know with the ls9 accessories i mean there's various reasons you would use spacers on a water pump but those spacers have a port tapped in uh, allowing you to run the steam line to right here okay now that's perfectly acceptable too because these two ports this port and this port are the ports that that is pulling the water back out of the engine and pushing it up and out this to the radiator these bottom ports are the ports where the water is flowing from the thermostat housing back into the engine so you do not want to run your steam lines into these ports because this is the water that's coming back from the radiator now that we've went over the different methods of running your steam lines um, the others are self-explanatory. I already explained, you know, the, the one on the radiator. I explained the top piece. Un unfortunately, uh, the method where you cut the radiator hose and you place the adapter in there, I do not have one of those adapters. There's a good reason for that. I don't use them. I don't like them. So really the only thing I have left to explain is how to tap and, and or how to drill and tap your water pump. This isn't going to take long. This is all you need right here. You need a R. I don't know if you can see that. I hope that focuses in, but it probably won't. If you can see right here, this is an R bit. Is that going to focus? Probably not, but it's actually an R bit, as in the letter R, okay? And what this is, is this is a tapered bit. And this is the bit that you'll use to drill a hole, a tapered hole, to tap for a 1 8 NPT fitting. Now, I got my uh, R bit, I believe, at Lowe's. Well, I know I got it at Lowe's because I don't shop at Home Depot. I won't even go into why. But um, it's, it's made by DeWalt. I think it was like $10. But, you know, I, I use it over and over, so it's worth it. So after you finish drilling it, you're just going to take a 1 8 NPT tap and thread it in there. Then you are going to need one of two fittings. If you've bought some eBay kit that ties your, uh, your steam vents together with like the, the Dash 4, uh, Dash 4 AN lines, 
then you're going to need something like this. This is a 1 8 NPT fitting on the bottom and a dash 4 AN line on the top. You just screw that guy in, boom, you're done. If you're using the original style uh, steam lines, then you're going to need a fitting more like this guy here. It's still 1 8 NPT on this end and you know it's just got a little nipple here so you can slide your uh, yeah this is actually on this is a turbo housing here but um, I'm just using this I didn't feel like taking this out to show you so that's why I'm holding this up but um, you know you just slide your hose on put a hose clamp on it good to go okay guys that's pretty much it uh, I hope that was informative for you I, I know it was just a quick simple little video but you know, people ask this question all the time. What do I do with my steam vent? Uh, why do I need my steam vent? So I just thought I'd clear that up for you. Anyway, if you like this video, hit the little like button. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, share it if you know somebody that needs it. And subscribe. And I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.